We sit down with leaders of the Campbell football program and explain what made 2020 such a unique season, not only from the recent exposure across the country, but playing four games in a short span of a month. I'm Evan Budjevich here with Julian Hill, the junior tight end and team captain. Julian, you were one of the five captains on this team. What were you and your captains looking to accomplish this season? Well, to say the least, uh, you know, this, this season was, to describe in one word, very unprecedented. Um, so I feel as if, you know, as leaders, we kind of got lucky because, you know, it was a time where we had to lead when everything around us, you know, wasn't going how we expected. We had to be able to, you know, get the guys motivated. We had to be able to get the guys, um, you know, for each game, each week, each lift, each meeting, we had to get these guys, like, motivated. So, and, and that's what we did. You know, we, we met together as leaders uh, each week and, like, you know, with the pandemic going on, with, uh, you know, having to protect the bubble uh, each week, uh, you know, it, it just helped us uh, kind of mature in a way, grow as leaders, and ultimately, uh, um, like, just getting these guys, like, like I said, motivated, man, each week. And it was really tough because with everything around us, you know, feel like it's falling apart, everything, like, against us. Uh, I, I feel as if, you know, we, we showed a lot of poise and confidence as leaders, and, you know, it, it rubbed off on the team. Hey, Julian, your team was a 35-point underdog against Georgia Southern to open the year. What did you make in terms of a statement competing down to the final seconds with Georgia Southern? Uh, I think we, we made a statement that you know, we're, we're a team that, as, as Coach Mint would tell us before each game, that we're going to be in your face for 60 minutes. All right? We're a team that, that's uh, eager to win. We're, we're chasing something that you know, a lot of other people can't see. It's something that's within the team that you know, we have a vision. Even though the game didn't turn out the way we, you know, we hoped for, uh, we, we show, I feel, as the nation that we're a team that, that's not going to quit. We're a team that's not going to give up, no matter what the scoreboard looks like, no matter if things are going good, whether the, uh, the things are going bad, we're not going to give up. We're going to be in your face for 60 minutes. And I think that's a statement we made. I think Georgia Southern felt that, um, and I know we felt it. So, Julian, you mentioned the competing down to the final seconds and trying to win that ball game. Last year's team won six in a row, and they lost four in a row. I'm curious how this year's team overcame some of that early difficulty and competed all four matchups. Um, and I, I give I give my hat off to uh, Coach Mint. Um, you know, he he kind of got us ready. You know, last year it, it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. Um, you know, we but it kind of helped us mature as a team, as a program, and kind of gave us a, a kind of a head start to understand what it's like to win uh, five games, what it's like to feel undefeated and what it's like to lose uh, and see the good and the bad notice why we were winning so like so frequently and why we were losing like and we had to figure that out as a program as we grow even more uh, this off season going into the uh, following or the next 2021 season uh, i think a lot of things are starting to show they're going to show this Campbell team played four FBS opponents. That is not common in FCS football. What did you think you and your teammates accomplished in terms of competing with that level of competition during this season? As we showed up each week, right, the, the poise and confidence that we showed uh, day in and day out, man, it, it was unbelievable um, that we, we, we stood toe to toe with, a, with programs that's been in the um, scholarship football, you know, for a long time, way longer than we have. And, um, with us just getting in it, you know, a few years ago, it just shows that Campbell's, you know, they're, they're up to something. Like, we're, we're up to something. Uh, the coach, Mint, he's doing a phenomenal job in putting us in these positions, putting us on national TV to play these four games. So we got a lot of exposure this year. We got a lot of, um, a lot of guys, young guys, freshmen, you know, that usually wouldn't go against these guys, you know, probably once, uh, once a year. But we have four, so these guys coming back, you know, they're going to be going against, you know, Big South opponents. Um, and that's, that's a lot different from Wake Forest, uh, App State, you know, teams that are Power 5 level. So, um, you know, that, that's what we accomplished, man. We, we accomplished a lot of maturity, accomplished a lot of experience with young guys and, and older guys um, in the hope of, you know, the following season. You were a recruited walk-on who made big steps and earned a scholarship and now a captain on this team. What does that say about your work ethic to reach those goals in, in three years? I think it's, you know, I got to give my hat off to, you know, the training staff, the 
uh, Coach Striff in the weight room, um, Coach Grimes, like, it's unbelievable. Like, how they took me, you know, took a chance on me and, and me just buying into what they were saying, me buying into what Coach Mint was uh, speaking. And I feel as if, you know, what Coach Mint says uh, is gold. <laughs> so you'll be a fool not to, you know, take in what he's saying, write it down, and, and buy into it. So, and that's what I did. And just buying into his culture, buying into what the coaches vision me to be, uh, weight-wise, uh, um, mentally, everything. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing, just buying into this culture and me just reflecting it on my teammates. And you know, as you see, like, they voted me team captain because they see, you know, what I'm trying to get out of this. And what I'm trying to get out of this, Coach Mint's trying to get out of this, right? So I'm just following what Coach Mint's saying, and hopefully it trickles down, and that's how we can create a culture, and that's you know, how we can change this program. You mentioned creating the culture, and I'm curious, Julian, because you and Haj Malik Williams, the captains, had some conversations midway through games when things weren't going your way. Mm -hmm. Take me through those conversations, and what were you saying to him to try to rally your team? The, the biggest thing in those conversations were how can we get you know, the team to not be so focused on what it looks like right now, but ultimately have a vision, understanding that we, we control our own destiny at the end of all of this. And by next year, you know, we will be holding up a, a championship and guys have to believe that. And um, understanding that this team, like we have to understand that, you know, a lot of pressure, it can make, it makes diamonds, right? But ultimately pressure can either bust pipes, right? It can, it can break a team, a lot of adversity. So how can we get all of our guys to understand that this pressure and this stuff that we're going through right now, adversity can build us into champions. Like it's rough before the road and that's, you know, Hodge and me, we'll go back and forth. And that's what we'll, we'll, we'll preach to the team, that this right now, don't worry about what it looks like right now. You got to see yourself down the road when we're holding up that championship. This was a unique year as well because not only are you playing tough competition, you're only playing four games. So mm -hmm. There's a lot of time to prepare for next season. How valuable are these next six to seven months to get you ready for the fall of 21? You know what? I think these, this offseason uh, is going to be one of the most important offseasons that this program has ever had, to tell you the truth. Uh, reason being, um, you know, we're not coming off a winning season, right? We're not flip-flopping from uh, different conferences. Um, so we've kind of been in the Big South already. We know what it looks like. Um, we're, we're coming off a losing season, but we know what we got on this team. Um, so it's going to be so important because we have to realize that 2021 is going to be the definition of the six, seven months, this off season. So what we put in, what we sacrifice, what we choose to say, what we, what we do, how we, you know, act in school, how we approach the game, how we approach the weight room and meetings, it's all going to be, um, you know, the 2021 season. That's, that's going to be the six or seven months. So, um, you know, as we prepare the six, seven months, we got to prepare like champions because if we want to be champions, we have to do it in the off season. So not only winning in the off season, but trying to dominate the local area. And, and one of the catchphrases you guys have is run the 910, a zip code that's familiar to here, a place that you grew up in. Right. What does it mean personally to be a home ground kid and trying to raise a champion here in Bowie's Creek? Oh, it means everything, uh, you know, very close to home. I have a lot of friends and, you know, coaches who come to the games who cheer me on, a lot of supporters. Um, and a lot of supporters, you know, we have great supporters in the local area in Bowie's Creek. Um, so to do that, you know, it would be such an amazing, it's like, a, it's like a, a dream come true. You know, you get to, you know, put on for your city, they say, you get to um, show out in front of, in front of your, um, your day one people. So that would be an amazing feeling to do that. When you're not playing with fans in a football stadium, What's that adjustment like? I know practice is one thing, but how do you adjust to not having fans for those final games? Uh, I think really the fans, especially away games, you know, not having fans, it kind of helped us because, <laughs> you know, it, it kind of made guys, especially young guys, you know, they didn't get too out of, the, out of themselves, right? They got to focus on the game and just the game and they have to worry about exterior things. Now having fans, you know, it's really fun. That's what makes up the fo makes up football. You know, every little piece of it. But you know, not having fans, it's just at the end of the day, we we told ourselves before the season that, you know, it, it's going to be football. At the end of the day, uh, we get a chance to play to play football, 
fans, no fans, we're still playing football. So um, guys, they, they, they did that, and we focused on that, the fact that it's just football at the end of the day, and let's play football. You mentioned playing football. Well, creating energy is so important when there's no one in the stands to watch. And you were one of the players during the third and fourth quarter that was so vibrant and energized, hyping the team up. How do you try to motivate your teammates? Just showing, you know, players, the reason I do those things is, you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful. I'm extremely blessed just to be uh, playing football at the college level. Uh, it, it, and when third and fourth quarter get, hits, no matter what it looks like, I tell guys all the time, I don't look at the scoreboard. You know, I just give my all to end the game in that moment because, you know, at the end of the day, guys got to realize, man, we, we're doing a, something that a lot of people wish they could be doing. We're doing something that, um, you know, it, it's extremely um, rewarding if you take it seriously and have fun with it to, you know, give all you got throughout the week. And when the game comes, man, let's have fun man. let's let's enjoy this game. Let's enjoy what everything that it gives you and everything that's creating because at the end of the day, man, it's, it's turning us into young men, it's turning us to, turning us into, uh, you know, champions, right? Champions don't, don't fumble uh, when things are going bad. Champions, you know, they stand tall and stand, be that same person no matter the circumstance. There's no light switch in the champion. So I try to show that and like put that um, mood out there in, into the guys, make them feel it and feel me and understand that, you know, no matter what it looks like, don't don't fold on the pressure. Don't fold because um, it's not what you thought it would be. Well, certainly, Julian, your story is fantastic to tell. Former walk-on, now a team captain. And we really appreciate the time breaking down 2020 and, mm -hmm. and how important it will be to prep for next year. Thank you.